How's it going everyone? I'm Jake James Lugo and welcome to the channel where you'll find some of the most honest and fair game reviews out there. And today we're getting all styled up because we're gonna get a little Suda51 in here and talk about No More Heroes. Now from the get go, I'm gonna say this a few times throughout the video as a reminder, but just to let you all know, yes, I do know about No More Heroes Heroes Paradise on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360, but the version of the game that we're reviewing this time is gonna be on the Nintendo Switch. Since that's the version of the game, that's the most recent and the most relevant. So without further ado, let's just dive into this and go over to the Garden of Madness! Man, that's so stupid to say, right? It's so freaking dumb. People who still think that Nintendo doesn't have any mature games on their consoles have clearly never met Suda51 and the developers at Grasshopper Manufacturer. No More Heroes is an action game that was first developed for the Nintendo Wii in 2007, where it used the motion controls for the Wii Nunchuck. It was re-released on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 a few years later and given the new subtitle, Heroes Paradise. Unlike the original, that version of the game had a number of new features and changes, including polished visuals, new difficulty modes, dual audio languages, and a whole lot more. However, the version that we're looking at here is the release of the game on the Nintendo Switch, which is simply a port of the original version from the Wii. Not gonna lie, that's already a big disappointment since there's already a better version out there but let's roll with it for now. Anyway, No More Heroes has a lot of influences from Western movies and pop culture. There's a lot of tongue-in-cheek humor and playful nods to different things that fans of video games or sci-fi will recognize immediately. But when it's not breaking the fourth wall and poking fun at something, No More Heroes tells the story of Travis Touchdown, an assassin working up the ranks of the United Assassins Association by defeating those ahead of him in battle. Rising up the chain will allow him to become number one and hopefully make a boatload of cash. I won't spoil anything else beyond that because the story really relies on you knowing as little as possible beforehand. But real talk, don't go in expecting something super deep or complex. The game doesn't take itself too seriously, and you shouldn't either. At the heart of everything is how much you like or grow to enjoy seeing Travis Touchdown. He's an anime and video game fan with a dirty mind, but is also vicious and aggressive to the core in battle. And yet, he still manages to take care of his pet cat Jean and get flustered when being around beautiful women. It's a kind of quirkiness and humor that only a game from Suda51 can really pull off. So what you're telling me is that I gotta continue fighting. There's no way out of this. You set me up, bitch. Quit your bitching and get with the program. There's only one road out of here. No turning back. Okay, how about this? If I become number one, will you do it with me? Hmm, maybe. Maybe not. Come on, just once. Even though Travis Touchdown is a likable character, his sense of style and his brazen attitude and his fighting style, all that is very cool. That's like some of the main reasons why everybody likes him. But the rest of the story kind of sucks. It's like whatever, it's all over the place. There's a lot of twists and turns and a lot of tongue-in-cheek pokes at pop culture and references that people are gonna get. But as far as like complex storytelling or at least something that's deep or at least, you know, basic when it comes to putting together like a main plot, it really isn't all that good. The thing is, if you don't put too much stock into it and you don't take it too seriously, you'll have a lot more fun with it. Trust me, again, you can just check out at some point and just accept what the game gives to you rather than looking for something that's just not going to be there. It's just that silly and that wild. One thing I should mention is that there's multiple endings to this game. There's a regular ending which ends on a cliffhanger that leads into the second game if you already know there's a No More Heroes 2. But if you decide to go with the true ending and actually see what it has to offer, there's a bonus boss fight that's really tough to deal with. But it adds in some more humor and adds more silliness, you know, in line with everything else in the game. But again, if you're not looking for a like crazy, like complex or consistent plot, you'll enjoy all of this a whole lot more. So with all that stuff out the way, what about everything else involving the game with its gameplay? Because this is the type of stuff that a lot of people seem to remember more about No More Heroes than anything else. Was it actually any good? Now get comfortable in your seat for a second, because we're going to have an honest talk about this game. Many people consider No More Heroes to be a classic on the Nintendo Wii, but I feel that they're really off base with this. Replaying this game again on the Nintendo Switch only confirmed that for me. So what am I talking about? No More Heroes is broken up into two main segments of gameplay. There's the combat with Travis using his beam katana against groups of enemies, and then there's exploring the city of Santa Destroy. Both are very different and feel like they were two halves of two very different games sewn together. And if we're still being honest here about this game, the exploration of Santa Destroy is not good. 
Like, it's really terrible. We've had games like GTA and other open world style games for a while before this came out, but what Suda and team did here was just trash. I'm serious here. The driving and exploring of Santa Destroy and No More Heroes is really bad. Like, where do I even begin? Walking around the city feels very stiff and way too slow. Travis's walk speed is just awful, and it feels like it takes forever to get somewhere. But what about using his motorcycle? That should be good, right? Wrong. Driving is a complete joke, not because of the motorcycle's handling or speed, but because the city looks and feels so empty. It's like it was made completely half-assed. Like, I'm not kidding. It's so lifeless and low quality. You can see people walking around the streets and run them over with your motorcycle, but they don't interact with you whatsoever. The cars on the road are low textured and look incomplete. Running into them with your bike does nothing and it just forces you to slow down. There's no crashes or anything. And if it wasn't enough, everything disappears occasionally like they're glitching out. It's really that bad. In the city itself, you could visit a few locations related to starting missions, shopping for bonus items, taking on side jobs for extra cash, and even changing Travis's appearances. But literally everywhere else in the city is completely barren. There's no reason to visit anywhere else in Santa Destroy, because it just feels like it's just there for no reason. This is Diane from Beefhead Videos, just calling to let you know that one of the videos returned yesterday wasn't one of ours. It doesn't have a label on it, but it seems to be a recording of a guy humping a pillow. The video you should have returned was, um, How to Please a Woman in Bed 101 Part 2. Please return it to us soon. Thank you. It's amazing just how much people have rose-tinted glasses on about this game, especially the Wii version, which the exploration alone is enough for this game to get criticized and crucified by so many people. There's just so many things that I feel like we give a lot of excuses for that. We probably wouldn't give a pass if it came out today, but maybe we were just desperate for a game that was edgy and mature on the Nintendo Wii on the Nintendo console, but... Either way, the exploration of Santa Destroy and No More Heroes, absolute trash. It's no wonder they got rid of that aspect in the sequel. But that's not the thing that everybody remembers from No More Heroes. Everybody remembers Travis Touchdown taking on legions of bad guys with his beam katana. The combat is what really stood out for a lot of people. But was it as good as people remember? Or was it absolute trash like the exploration? Now I'll admit, the combat in this game has a good foundation and can look pretty stylish but it's definitely not perfect. Missions take you around Santa Destroy and force you to defeat groups of enemies that lead to boss fights at the end that help Travis rank up in the UAA rankings, with the story progressing as you go. Travis fights enemies with his beam katana and uses wrestling moves to slam them into the ground. As you attack and block, your beam katana loses power and needs to recharge. Of course, this being a Suda51 game, doing so is highly suggestive and looks silly. In the Wii version, you had to shake the remote in order to charge. So you can only imagine how that must have looked. Check it out! You can also upgrade and use different katanas over the course of the game, as well as learn new wrestling moves too. All of this could get very repetitive as you complete missions, but I do like slamming enemies into the ground with a suplex before slicing them up. It's pretty funny and can lead to some pretty quick kills that look stylish. <laughs> At the end of every one of the ranking missions is a boss fight. These are tough and could be super frustrating. There were times that I had to stop playing because of how annoying and borderline unfair that these fights got. I find that the tactics and patterns of the bosses to be incredibly cheap and drawn out for no reason. Some bosses remain invincible for a time where you just have to wait for their animations to finish before you could deal any damage whatsoever. The problem with this is when you have bosses that are constantly moving and attacking so fast, giving little to no opportunity to fight back for a long time. And mind you, this is before you have to deal with their instant kill moves. Yeah, the game will put you into situations where you have no idea what's coming and then all of a sudden will get killed from a random attack that the boss will throw at you. It's a very cheap trick that you won't know about until it happens. It's never fun to deal with and brings the fun of combat into a nosedive. Late game bosses love to spam these type of attacks along with combos that just keep going for no reason. I swear this has to be some sort of AI programming issue that was completely overlooked during development. 
because a few bosses just keep reusing attacks over and over again like this. It could cause battles to go on way longer than they should and diminishes any fun there is to be had. Now something that is a little bit weird with its execution is the dark side mode that Travis can go into as he kills a bunch of enemies in all the different missions. This is something that happens at super random, there's this little slot wheel at the bottom of the screen, and as you execute enemies with the different button prompts, you'll sometimes see it like start to spin, and at one point, it'll match up with all the different images, and you'll get some sort of power or ability that really boosts up like Travis's killing abilities. Like it just, it looks cool when it happens, but you have no control over when and how it actually goes down. Some of the abilities are really dope and they like allow you to do different stuff like shoot projectiles or really chop up enemies with ease, but I really wish that you had more control with this. In later versions of the game, the Heroes Paradise version, you're actually able to store this up and use it at a later time, and I like that. I wish that was in there from the get-go, I wish that was in there in the Nintendo Switch version, but for whatever reason, they just didn't think of that back then when they developed this game for the Wii. And for the record, there is one thing I do want to harp on again with this game. Number one, fuck the fight with Shinobu, and number two, fuck the fight against Bad Girl. Both of these boss fights are absolute garbage. They are not fun, they are super unfair, they are very tedious, and super annoying to deal with. There were so many times I had to redo these boss fights specifically multiple times in order to get through them because some of the nonsense that the computer throws at you, it's just so frustrating and annoying. I know that some people give an excuse for the instant kill moves and they think that it adds on to the challenge, but personally for me, I hate these things on top of all the other nonsense I gotta deal with. It's just so annoying. You mean to tell me that these little scrampy little schoolgirls could parry my beam katana attacks with their hands instantly, but then I have to sit there for like maybe 10 minutes while they just launch all these attacks of which they're completely invincible throughout the entire duration. That is so annoying and so unfair and so incredibly stupid. So after going through everything, can I recommend that you guys check out No More Heroes on the Nintendo Switch? Technically, this is the Nintendo Wii version ported over to that console, but if I'm being totally honest here, I say that you could skip this game. Unless you're already a big fan of No More Heroes, then yeah, go ahead, by all means, check out this game. It's gonna be the exact same game that you played back then, but with all the problems that I mentioned before, all the different bugs and glitches, all the different problems and the frustrations I had playing through this game again, I feel like if you just wanna know the story, if you wanna know the style and like what's going on with the first No More Heroes, you go just watch videos on YouTube and be totally fine, and then go straight directly into the sequel. I've always said that I felt that the second game was much better than the first, and going through this game again for this review only confirm that it's finally over can the guy get some privacy at least when he's taking a dump i'm afraid not these fights don't work like that it's time to die mr first rank you gotta be shitting me and there we have it, people. That's my review of No More Heroes on the Nintendo Switch. Again, the Wii version technically ported over. But still, I wish that we had gotten the Heroes Paradise version on the Nintendo Switch, since that technically is the better version of this game. I always hate it where there's always like a better version of a specific game or a classic, and they decide to go with the really old one just for the sake of just being traditional. Personally, for me, like I said, I'm a fan of the series, but I think that a lot of the stuff that happened in that original game from that era was just not that good. I've I've always said that the second game is just so much better because they learned so much from this first entry and then really changed things up for No More Heroes 2, which by the way, I will be reviewing here on this channel a lot sooner than you think. But as always, like any other game that we review here, that's just my opinion about it. Let me know your thoughts and opinions about No More Heroes down in the comments section below. Tell me, are you a fan of the series? Do you like Travis Touchdown? What are some of the things that you hated about this game or this series as a whole? Or if there's any other games that are similar to No More Heroes, talk to me about that stuff down below in the comments section. Hey there everyone, thanks for watching this video. I appreciate all of your support as always. On the side here, I have some game reviews and other cool videos you might like to watch. Make sure you leave me a comment down below and subscribe to the channel too. Don't forget to hit that bell icon to be in the know when I post up new videos for you to check out. I'll talk to you all again real soon. Peace out and stay epic everybody.